Good evening and welcome to Tucker Carlson tonight. We have spent nearly a year looking for a Russian scandal. For months, it's been basically the only thing anyone in Washington talked about. Many people were certain it would end in impeachment and prison terms. I've come to conclude that Trump has the Kremlin clan surrounding him. There's more to be learned about it. I believe there's been collusion. It's starting to smell more and more uh, like collusion to, I think, the public. We saw cold, hard evidence of the Trump campaign, indeed the Trump family, eagerly intending to collude, possibly, with Russia. Well, it's finally happened. We have a Russia scandal. But instead of proving collusion between the Trump campaign and the government of Vladimir Putin, this one reveals deep wrongdoing in the Obama administration, and it's real. We've known for several years that Russian money was flowing to the Clinton family and the foundations during the exact same period the Obama administration approved the Russian acquisition of 20 percent of this country's strategic uranium reserves. But now, new reporting from the Hill newspaper reveals that as early as 2009, the FBI was investigating secret Russian efforts to get the deal done by bribing Americans. And yet somehow the public and even key officials were never told about that investigation as they made the decision to allow the deal to go forward. At least one American businessman says he directly witnessed Russian efforts to convince the Clintons to approve that deal. The businessman says he was blocked from publicly telling Congress what he knew because he was ordered to remain silent by Eric Holder's Justice Department. It's a remarkable story and potentially a very significant one. Peter Schweitzer originally broke this story in a book called Clinton Cash. He's been covering it ever since, and he joins us now. Peter, thanks for coming on. Thanks, Dr. Thanks for having me. So this is a kind of confusing code of the story. The person who apparently has firsthand evidence that the Russian government tried to suborn the Clintons to get them to support the deal has been prevented from speaking even to Congress. How can that be, and what's the justification for that? Uh, well, that's a great question, Tucker. Uh, what we know, apparently, based on the reporting, uh, is that he has been put under a gag order by the Department of Justice uh, and has been told that if he speaks about this publicly, not only will he face uh, financial penalties in the form of a fine, uh, that he could actually go to jail, that his liberty uh, would be at risk, um, which is mystifying to me. I mean, why do we not want to know the details about this? That's what's so troubling, is it reeks of cover-up. It, it, just, it just stinks. There's no other word for it. As a legal matter, how can the Justice Department from a previous administration tell the Congress of the United States elected officials that they can't talk to an American citizen about allegations of bribery that put our national security at risk? How does that work? Well, it, it, it really uh, shouldn't work and can't work. And what I mean is the Department of Justice today, under President Trump, Attorney General Sessions, could tomorrow come back and say we are removing this gag order, that we believe that there's a compelling national interest to know. We want this uh, individual to testify before Congress. Uh, we want the public to know exactly what went on. So this is not something that's unbreakable, but it just simply takes a request from the Department of Justice to remove that gag order. If that gag order is not removed, I think it's doubtful this businessman's going to want to go public because he doesn't want to be put in legal jeopardy. So back to the core question, the approval of this deal, Uranium One, purchased by a Russian company, giving the Russians, in effect, control of 20 percent of our uranium supply. The office of then Secretary of State Hillary Clinton said basically she had nothing to do with the approval. Right. Is that right. true? How could that be true? Uh, it, it's, it's not true, and, and it's interesting with the Podesta emails that came out, the leaked Podesta emails, what you find is how they tried to cover this up. Uh, one of the assistant secretaries, a gentleman named Fernandez, came forward and said, oh, I was the one that really made the decision. She was not involved in that decision. But if you look in the Podesta emails, you see exactly how it went down. Fernandez is communicating with John Podesta and is saying, let me know what I can say, how I can be helpful. So she was intimately involved in this decision. And, and this is the important thing to keep in mind, Tucker. Hillary Clinton 
in 2008 when she ran for president went into detail. She actually had a plan on toughening CFIUS, this body uh, that would right. approve these kind of controversial deals. So she's very knowledgeable on this subject, and she's a hawk on this issue. So for her to pretend like, well, I don't really know what was going on, I was not involved, just stretches credulity, and that's one of the reasons we need to have an investigation. And really, to this point, Tucker, we have not had a congressional hearing on this. We've not had a grand jury, as far as we know. It's just shocking to me that there's been no investigation on this whatsoever. Just to be clear, the dots that we're connecting are not very far apart. So the chairman of this right. uranium company, Uranium One, is also on the board of the Clinton Foundation and a close friend of the Clintons. John Podesta's yes, that's company, right. the Podesta Group, lobbied on behalf of this company, Uranium One. Am I, am I getting these facts wrong? You're, you're exactly right, Tucker. Here's the bottom line. As this deal was coming for approval in 2010, the Clinton Foundation received from nine shareholders in this uranium company that was sold to the Russians. Nine of them all of a sudden decided they were going to donate large amounts of money to the Clinton Foundation, more than $145 million. Uh, and by the way, a lot of those donations were never declared publicly by the Clintons. Right. They were hidden. Um, so it, it stinks in so many levels. Here's the other important national security implication, Tucker. This deal was predicated on the fact that when the Russians got control of this uranium, it would not be exported out of the United States. Right. That was part of the agreement. The New York Times has now reported that that's not true. Yellow cake from these uranium mines are being exported out of the United States, and we don't even really know where they're going. That right. in and of itself demands investigation. Yeah, about 20 percent of it they've reported has gone to some unknown destination, which which is ominous. Peter Schweitzer, again, the person who broke this story in the beginning and has been on it ever since. Thank you.